there's what we call intrinsic cognitive load. Intrinsic cognitive load is just simply the stuff that you want to teach them, the stuff, the information that you need to get across, and you want to go into their long-term memory. How do you get it into their long-term memory? By practice, and lots and lots of practice. The problem is, unless you give them practice, it will be gone. So there needs to be constant rehearsal. Okay, now then. What I'm going to teach you is I'm going to teach you my new alphabet. But actually, you've got a jump start on these kids that we're, we're, we will be presenting to um, you know, in the classroom for the first time because you know how it works already. You know how this lesson goes. You've got the template for this lesson. They haven't got the template. What they call that in, in, in the language of uh, John Sweller and his colleagues is they call it extraneous cognitive load. In other words, it's stuff that you really don't want, you don't need for what you need to learn. It's the sort of stuff that goes in the presentation. So that's why scripts and templates are very useful. And if they don't change, then you're not presenting children with this extra cognitive load every time that you do a lesson. In fact, you're presenting them with the same stuff. What you're changing is the little bits of stuff uh, that you're working with as you go along. So I'm going to teach you my new alphabet. So these are all the sounds we need to build the word mat. Mat. So, what's the first sound you hear when I say, and obviously you're a bit older, so I don't need to say when my finger's under this line. What's the first sound you hear when I say mat? Mat. <laughs> That's right. So, um, I don't know, can you come and show me, um, can you show me which of these is mm, please? Which is that one? <laughs> okay, so, uh, so everybody say mm, mm. and say mm, as she puts it down and puts it on the line. Mm. That's lovely, well done, thank you. <laughs> so, you. what's the next, what's the next sound you get in mat? Mat, okay? Ah, it is ah. Emily, would you come and show us which of these is ah, please? Which is ah. Actually, it's this one. Okay, would you like to pull it down? So, everybody say that. Ah. Okay, right. Okay, thank you very much. Off you go. I'm going to ask Mary uh, in a second. Just stay there for a second. What sound can you hear here when I say mat? You can't hear it. Can you come and show us which of these is t, please? It's that. It is that one. Well done. Very good, Mary. Off you go. Right, lovely. Thank you. Say t with her. Okay, so now say the sound. Mm -hmm. Very good, well done. Okay, lovely. And then, of course, what would we do now? Everybody would write it and everybody would go, mm, at, and then we'd read it back, mm, at, mat. Okay, now you know what? If you're presenting that to uh, a, 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 a group of little kids, you wouldn't do anymore. That would be the most you'd do. That's your start. That's all you need to do. But tomorrow, you might do it again, or in fact, this time, Children, today we're going to build the word sat. Sat. <laughs> What's the first sound you hear in sat? Okay, so first thing, come on and show me which of these is stupid. See, she has done this before. <laughs> Put it down and say s. Okay, thank you very much. Can you remember which is the next one? Sat. Which is ah. Remember which is that? It is very good. So, and can we put the last one in? And everybody says t and so on. Okay, and then you write it. Now that is pretty tough, isn't it, really? When you think about it, you've got to remember all that stuff. Now if I introduce some more, think about how much cognitive load there is then. Cognitive load is about not just presenting them with bits of information, but the way that those bits of information interact as well. So if you're presenting too much stuff, it falls off the table. They can't handle it. However, we're also building a schema. If you want stuff to go into long-term memory, we're building a schema for the way that sounds and spellings in the language work. And we're going to present this stuff, give them lots and lots of practice. It will go into long-term memory with enough practice and enough exposure. And over a period of time, we're going to add to what they know. 
And we're going to develop their understanding as well because then they'll, they'll come up against the boundaries of their current understanding. One letter, one sound. Two, two letters, one sound. And so on and so on. And all the time we're going to be expanding on that. But at the same time we're going to be incorporating what we've just done into what we're doing now so that it's constantly recycled and there's constant practice and rehearsal. Okay? That's the only way to get it into long-term memory. What these guys say, and I completely agree with them, is that if it doesn't go into long-term memory, it's not been learnt. Okay? You haven't learnt it if you haven't got it into your long-term memory. So the only way to get things into long-term memory really is to uh, build schemas, and to add to those schemas all the time, whatever the subject is, it doesn't make any difference, and to co practice constantly, and don't present more than two or three new items when you're, uh, when you're teaching, because if you do, a, a lot of your kids will simply not be able to handle it. Some kids will, but because of course they'll have prior learning, and that's why some kids do well, lots of prior learning. 